wrap up here some of the fictional ships uh, from the various sci-fi franchises that I'm going to cover. Um, mostly from Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, BSG, Babylon 5, and Space Battleship Yamato, uh, or Star Blazers. Um, there are more sci-fi series that I'm sure I will cover at some point, but I don't like to cover a series unless I've seen it. Because I don't want to read about anything from a series I haven't seen because I don't want to spoil anything. So, uh, I know there's someone out there who requested a ship, I think, from Stargate. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I know and I know for a fact that uh, uh, something might have been a former teacher of mine from high school wanted a video on the TARDIS. Yes, there will be videos on them. But I don't like to spoil the series, so... Don't hold your breath. Um, but they will happen at some point, I'm sure. But anyway, those are going to be the main sci-fi franchises. So, like, Star Wars, Star Trek, BSG, Babylon 5. Most of Babylon 5. Uh, Star Blazers. And I think Farscape as well. Uh, anyway. Excuse me. We're going to start with, again, the Corvette. One of these days, I'm going to say Corvette and mean the car. Uh, a Corvette is a small and fast and maneuverable ship. Uh, usually in Star Wars, it's roughly 100 to 200 meters long, according to the Anaxis War College. That's kind of what I'm going to go off of for most of this kind of thing, unless it specifically tells me otherwise. So yes, I'm going to be applying Star Wars logic to other other sci-fi franchises, but hey, unless it tells me otherwise, I'm just going to go with that. <clears throat> An example of this would be the CR90, and yes, it's also a blockade runner, but it's a Corvette. I, I, I <laughs> don't get mad at me. Get mad at get mad at people who wrote this crap. Frigate is also a broad term that can uh, mean different things depending on the franchise. Uh, in Star Wars, they're usually between 200 and 400 meters. The example I'm going to use, though, is from Star Trek, and it's the New Orleans class. The cruiser is another blanket term that often refers to any spacecraft or military starship uh, at all. So, cruiser is an even broader term in sci-fi. But, again, in Star Wars, it usually falls around the 400 to 600 meter mark. I'm going to use the Ranger class for this, though. The heavy cruiser is a less broad term, but mostly that's just because it's less common, uh, usually for any large ship, but in terms of it being a cruiser, uh, it's similar to real life, uh, to the real life light cruiser association, uh, heavy cruiser association, excuse me, with the light cruiser. The example I'm going to go with is the Dreadnought from Star Wars. Attack cruiser is, again, a broad term because, hey, it sounds cool. Which, you know, in all honesty, is all you need in the sci-fi franchise because uh, they're not real. So you can do whatever you want. Um, but it's usually a cruiser meant for attacking or a, uh, for ship-to-ship -ship combat. Uh, usually you see it with species like the Klingons, or very, very combat-oriented, the Vorcha class, for example. A light cruiser is a ship meant to operate on its own or as part of a fleet, typically smaller and faster than uh, the larger capital ships. The... Uh, Example I'm going to use is the Arquitens class from Star Wars. Star Cruiser is a term usually associated with Mon Calamari ships, uh, but I'm included here anyway because, hey, it's uh, it's also a blanket term for any larger starship meant for combat. Well, I guess it doesn't even be meant for combat, but it's usually meant for combat. Example being the MC-80. <coughs> this next one is specific to a... Uh, to a uh, sci-fi franchise, and it's Star Wars, and that's the Star Destroyer. Not to be confused with Destroyer in terms of, like, actual naval combat. Star Destroyers are usually the large capital ships. Uh, they refer to a ship between 1,000 and 200, uh, 2,000 meters, excuse me, uh, in the Anaxis War College, and typically they're hybrid battleship carriers. They don't have to be, but they typically are. Uh, you'll see specialized ones as, uh, as well. Uh, like the Venator, which is more specialized towards uh, carrier operations. Um, this term kind of has some leeway. There are certain ships that are smaller than the uh, Anaxis War College uh, length thing, which, by the way, length is a horrible thing to go off of. <laughs> length means nothing when it comes to how the ship is, how the, what the ship is meant to do. <laughs> but uh, hey, that's what they use. 
An example, of course, being the Imperial class Star Destroyer. Battle cruiser is probably the most common term for a combat ship in a sci-fi franchise. Uh, it's any capital ship, really. I mean, you can call it l literally anything under the sun. Star Wars refers to the ships between 2,000 and 5,000 meters long, uh, like the Resurgent class or the Allegiance class, uh, ships like that. Dreadnought is another blanket term, usually for the largest ship in service of a navy. In Star Wars, anything over 5,000 meters. Uh, technically, I guess in Star Wars, the term Super Star Destroyer also exists, but a Super Star Destroyer is essentially just an Imperial Dreadnought, you know. It, it, it's a it's a it's a dreadnought that's shaped like a triangle. So, I don't really consider Super Star Destroyer to be any specific term, but it is it is there. Same exact definition, just in Star Wars, and it's usually Imperial. Example example of both dreadnought and Super Star Destroyer would be the Executor class. Here's one that's fairly unique. Uh, well, the, the, the term itself is not unique to any particular science fiction franchise, but the term is itself unique to science fiction, and that's the time ship, and that's a ship meant to travel through time, uh, the Aeon class uh, or the uh, Relativity class. Uh, usually, you see something like Star Trek. A transport is a ship meant to transport people or cargo. Go figure. Class J in Star Trek. A starfighter is a small craft meant to act as a fighter in space. And I consider these warships because they're usually referred to as ships and they operate in the same medium as the warships that I'm covering. So, yeah, the, the, the difference being, you know, fighter jets don't fight in water. They fight in the air. So, a battleship does not fight in the air, it fights in the water. So I can put them into different series. But a starfighter and a star destroyer in Star Wars, or a battle cruiser in sci-fi, or whatever whatever you're looking at, an X-wing and a star destroyer both operate in the same medium, therefore both the same thing. The X-wing would be the equivalent of a PT boat <laughs> in real life, but it works in the same medium. Anyway, you get my idea. Uh, example would be the X-wing, Tie Fighter, Viper, Cylon Raider, yada yada yada. Attack fighter is a Star Trek term for a small fighter craft. Uh, they tend to be bigger than most uh, sci-fi fighters, but that's mostly because Star Trek doesn't really do the whole fighter thing. Um, they can be single or two seats, or they can be small uh, warships. Uh, Paragon class is the best example. That's like a fighter-oriented one. The Cardassians and the Jem'Hadar also use attack fighters, but they tend to be really, really... They tend to be more like PT boats. Uh, bombers are starfighters meant to attack installations or ships with explosive weapons, like the Y-Wing. And finally, this is a pretty much only Star Wars term, but it can be applied to other <coughs> franchises, but you'll never hear it in the IP, I don't think, outside of uh, Star Wars, and that's the snub fighter. And it's a term for a starfighter with its own hyperdrive and shields, which basically allows it to operate without the support of a carrying vessel, a mothership, or a base. Next example of that would be the X-Wing. Destroyer is a less commonly used term, but it usually refers to a small escort craft or smaller warship, uh, the Omega class from Babylon 5. Couriers are specialized ships meant to uh, operate as transports, usually uh, for dispatches or orders, the Condor class, which is also the Maki Raider, um, but it was a courier as well. The Explorer is a Star Trek term, and specifically a Federation term, used for a uh, ship meant for deep, deep space exploration, but it also can act as the capital warship uh, in times of war. Uh, the Galaxy class, the Sovereign class, are examples of this. They are ships that are designed for exploration, but they are also built to be warships. Which is how I distinguish them from like a battle cruiser or a battleship, because that's not what they're designed to do. They're just really good at it. Well, not really good at it in terms of the galaxy, but Sovereign is really good at it. Uh, but that's why I distinguish them from battleships, uh, because they're meant to explore. They can fight as well, but their primary job is to go out and 
explore strange new worlds. Another one that's funny in Star Trek, uh, and it's kind of analogous to explore, is the starship, which is a term used in the 20th, 23rd century, <laughs> excuse me, uh, and it's analogous to explore and function. The Constitution class is an example of this. Uh, I think this is mostly due to just the cheesy nature of the original series of Star Trek, and I kind of love it, so we're going to be uh, okay with that. Heavy explorers were uh, heavy Federation starships that were more centered around combat, but were still capable of deep, deep space exploration. Uh, I guess the Sovereign class would be a better example of this. Um, the Sovereign is definitely more battleship than it is science ship, but it still has labs like astrometrics, and, you know, a whole bunch of these kind of things that it can go out and explore and all that stuff. Uh, runabout, which I believe is a real term, but I have not, I, I didn't see anything about it in any of my real life sources, but I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but in Star Trek, which is where it's probably most famous for being used, uh, it's a Federation designa designation for a ship larger than a shuttle, but smaller than a full starship and is equipped with limited weapons and a warp drive. Uh, and, and shields, and were fitted for missions, uh, had mission-specific living and carrying conditions. Basically, you modified the ship for the mission you were going on, and you were docked at a starbase or uh, a ground base or, you know, somewhere, you were, or you returned to a, to a mothership. According to some games, they may have been used uh, in the role of torpedo bombers. Uh, the Star Trek one would be the Danube class. Escorts were usually smaller ships uh, meant to protect larger ships in a fleet or convoy. Um, I'm going to go with Defiant on this. It fits the best kind of for that. Um, anyway, medical frigates serve the same purpose as a hospital ship, essentially. Um, they tend to be smaller, though. Uh, I mean... The Pelta is the one I always think of because it's you know designed to get people to a medical station, but uh, you also have hospital ships in sci-fi like the Olymp uh, the Olympia class in Star Trek, so mm. can't use that wherever you want. Scouts were lighter or smaller ships used to surprise surprise scout for a fleet, um, and at least in some cases could be used for other purposes, but that was what they were built for. The Federation scout ship from Insurrection is an example, and it's one of the best things that comes out of Insurrection. Although it suffers from the same problem that most everything else in Insurrection suffers from, and that's the lack of a proper light rig. Science vessels were vessels meant to carry out scientific research. There you go. The Nova and Oberth class are examples of this. Supply ships are, you guessed it, a ship meant to supply a fleet, base, or planet. The Action 4 transport, uh, excuse me, Action... And or, and or Action 6 transport. The next one is Star Trek specific, and that's the Warbird. This is a warship designation for a large battle cruiser that is designed to look like a predatory bird, and yes, that is literally the only thing that makes it a Warbird. And if Warbird didn't sound so badass, I would ridicule that, but... God almighty, I love the Romulans, so I'm okay with it. Um... Usually, the weapons were intended for end on fire, so I, I guess it counters the crossing the T thing, but crossing the T in sci-fi has never been a thing, so I don't know what purpose that has. It, it looks cool. We're going to go with that. Example of this would be the Dadiradex class. Bird of Prey is a similar idea. It's a smaller warship, usually with smaller weapons mounted on wing-like structures, uh, typically, just think of a warbird, but smaller. They also look like predator predatory birds. The Brel class, uh, Klingon bird of prey, is an example of this. And they're really a subset of the escort uh, or similar ships in the same way that a warbird is basically just a battle cruiser. Interceptors are small warships typically used in the same way that a coastal defense ship was used in real life, typically smaller or faster and more suitable for close combat rather than long-range combat um, or any kind of endurance mission. The Orions use them, uh, their interceptors. The shuttle is a spacecraft that is typically carried aboard a larger ship or starbase meant for moving people or supplies. The Lambda comes to mind. They can be uh, super, capable of superluminal travel. They don't have to be, I don't think. 
A lot of times in Star Wars and Star Trek they are, though, um, because they'll be used uh, kind of in the uh, dispatch role. The Aqua Shuttle is a shuttle that can fly in space, in atmosphere, and float in and underwater. Uh, pretty much only in Star Trek, and the only time you see it is just called an Aqua Shuttle. The Captain's Yacht is a large support craft designed to be the personal shuttlecraft for the Captain of Federation Starship, the Cousteau on the Enterprise. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Auxiliary Space Vessel is a vessel meant for a specific purpose that is carried aboard a bigger ship. It includes shuttles and escape pods. Uh, so it's your auxiliary craft. Uh, think of your launches on a, on a real-life ship. Long-range shuttles were Federation shuttlecraft that could detach their fuselage from their warp drive, uh, which was also known as a warp sled. The uh, term shuttlecraft is a Star Trek term for a shuttle, so uh, any, any kind of similar shuttle name you'll see a lot. Ferengi shuttle and the Federation, various Federation shuttles uh, come to mind there. A shuttle pod is a smaller shuttle craft, typically only capable of impulse or, at the most, very low warp speed. Um, the United Earth shuttle pod carried aboard the Enterprise NX-01 comes to mind there. Escape pod, pretty self-explanatory. It's a pod meant to help people escape a damaged or destroyed ship. Um, basically, when you go through the significant emotional event of, oh my god, the ship is on fire, uh, you head for one of these. Assuming General Grievous hasn't launched them all or something stupid. <clears throat> uh, for plot... Drone ship is a ship with no pilot or a crew um, of any description, although sometimes they can be operated with a crew, but they're not intended to. Or they can be retrofit to operate without a crew, in which case they may still have a bridge section. Um, but they're operated by remote control. Uh, the Section 31 ship from Discovery is an example of this, even though I haven't seen that season yet, because I'm crap. A Zilch ship, this actually is a term, I guess, that does exist in, in real-life naval operations, but they're very, very rare because they're hard to do. Uh, it's a ship with either specific technology, like a cloaking device, uh, in which case it can be applied to any of these ships so far, or reflective paint or specific characteristics like radar reflecting shapes, uh, or some other characteristics that make it hard or impossible to detect on sensors, like the Stealth Star, uh, which doesn't cloak, but is hard to see. <clears throat> uh, typically another ship with stealth capabilities added there's very few purpose-built stealth ships. The Republic stealth ship, the Stealth Star, the other stealth ship that was on BSG that I forgot the name of because the Blackbird, the Blackbird, that's what it was called, uh, are examples of purpose-built ones. The Klingon Bird of Prey is an example of a stealth ship that isn't really a stealth ship. It's just a ship with a cloaking device. And yes, I'm moving my computer around, so you're going to be hearing that. So you're welcome. A raider is a ship meant to raid emergents or lone warships. Uh, it can also be used to describe a fighter. The Cylon Raider or the Klingon Raider come to mind. Here's another specific term to a specific sci-fi franchise, this time BSG, and that's the Battlestar. Uh, it's similar to a Star Destroyer. In fact, it's almost identical to a Star Destroyer. It's a hybrid battleship carrier that is usually the capital warship of a colonial fleet. And I, it, basically, it's a Star Destroyer, but it's long with two flight pods instead of triangular with one big hanger on the bottom. The Mercury or Jupiter class. See, I did learn an uh, example of that. And finally, because it's officially almost 3.30, and uh, I'm about had it, uh, is the Assault Ship, which is usually a ship meant to support uh, and land ground troops, like the Acclimator. So that's it for me. Uh, wow, this has been just a thing, and I'm sure it's going to be lovely to edit. I uh, don't know when I'll get it. When I'll get it done, of course, you won't have any idea how long it takes me to get it done because, hey, you're only just now hearing this. Uh, isn't it? Isn't isn't YouTube lovely? Um, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found this informative. Uh, if not, probably frustrating to listen to because I'm uh, I'm incoherent enough at 12 uh, p.m. after a good night's sleep. 3:30 a.m. is probably not a good time to record. I don't suspect I'll ever be doing it again, if I can help it, but uh, hey, you live and learn, and uh, I don't really have much choice in the matter, because I'm recording right now to keep uh, my brain occupied, and away from 
the difficult situation that uh, I find myself in. But uh, hey, that's not your problem. You're just here for the videos. And I respect that. So there you go. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like, comment if you can, and subscribe. Um, next few videos, I'm going to be trying some new tricks out. And I might try the community tab as well. Because I just discovered that exists. Um, so we'll see. Uh, also, new intro on this video. Uh, hope you liked it. Um, let me know. And uh, I'll catch you all in the next video. Good night.